This Voodoo 3 2000 was sent to me by a viewer some time ago and appeared in multiple videos on my channel. Initially, the card didn't produce any VGA output, but this was quickly resolved by reflashing the BIOS. I also added a missing capacitor and reinstalled the heatsink for the voltage regulator. Then there were multiple videos where we lowered the core voltage of the 3DFX chip and measured the heat generated by the card. After some experimentation, we ended up with an undervolted but still overclocked graphics card from 3DFX for the PCI interface. And I named it the Voodoo 3 3333 with a custom BIOS boot message. To my knowledge, this card is faster than any PCI Voodoo 3 officially released by 3DFX. And although the project was successful, I do have reservations about the heatsink. I used a universal Northbridge heatsink because the distance of the mounting holes is non-standard on 3DFX cards and I needed something adjustable. Unfortunately, the heatsink is very tall and would prevent me to use the PCI slot right below the 3DFX card. But we are going to fix this today. The goal is to install this cooler, which is half the height of the current heatsink. But it comes with a requirement to have a power connector to plug the fan. If you look at the 3DFX card, you will not find any provision for a fan connector. To my knowledge, all Voodoo 3 cards were passively cooled, which most likely is one of the reasons they are known to get hot. Especially if you do not have good air circulation in your case or even on the open test bench. Luckily, there are a few holes drilled into the PCB, one of which I'm planning to misuse for installing a header to power the fan. But from where can we take the supply voltage? I do not want to solder wires directly to the PCI connector. The back of the card is component free with just a few pins from the through hole components. The only viable option would be the through hole voltage regulator. But this solution comes with its own set of challenges. The center pin is the output delivering 3.3 volts to the memory and another voltage regulator. One pin is ground and the third pin is the 5 volt input. If you ever looked at the labels of PC fans, then you may have seen that most require 12 volts. So we only have access to 5 volts and since I do not want to connect the fan directly to the power supply, I got this fan with a proper voltage rating we can use on this Voodoo 3. Once I hopefully succeed with this modification, we are going to measure the heat generated by the card. But instead of using the P2 Pro thermal camera that I have used in previous videos, we are going to use the T2S Plus, a new offering from X Infrared. The camera was provided to me and I'm curious how it performs, but more about this later once we're done with the modification. When I try to align the cooler, I notice three issues. First, there is an oscillator in the way of the cooling fins. It is not a showstopper, but I have to make some space. Bending about three fins out of the way should be good enough. The second issue is the distance of the mounting holes. If I'm not mistaken, most mounting pins for this type of VGA coolers are 55mm apart. The holes on the 3DFX card are around 57mm apart, which makes it impossible to install the cooler without some extra work. There seems to be enough material to take away about 1mm from each hole on the heatsink. I will try my best using a round metal file to carefully widen the holders for the push pins. Surprisingly, it didn't take a long time to get this done. With the fins bent away from the oscillator and the mounting holes elongated, we can see the third issue that needs to be taken care of. There are about 5 fins that cover the PCI connector. The trick of bending them out of the way will no longer work since the fan needs some space to spin. The only solution I could come up with was to remove the ones that were in the way. And that was the last adjustment I had to make. Now we can apply thermal paste and install the heatsink. The last thing we need to do is to add the fan header. I got a box of connectors for different purposes. The two pin connectors are perfect for this project and the fan connector fits perfectly through the pre-drilled hole on the PCB. 
To ensure a strong bond between the plastic header and the PCB, I use a two-component epoxy adhesive. Something you should easily get in a hardware store or on Amazon. And here are the wires already soldered to the voltage regulator and our fan header. The black wire is ground and the white wire is connected to 5 volts. I am pretty happy with the outcome. But now we need to see if my custom cooling solution works. Hey, we have a spinning fan the moment we turn on the system. In a previous video, I measured the temperature of this card overclocked to Voodoo 3 3500 levels, at a frequency of 183 MHz and a core voltage of 2.6 volts. The voltage regulator hovered around 50 degrees, while the memory and the back of the card reached 48 degrees. An 80mm fan provided good airflow over the entire front of the card. Unfortunately, the Voodoo 3 was not stable with those settings and I had to settle for 174 MHz and a voltage of 2.5 volts. But now let's have a look at the thermal properties of the card using the T2S Plus thermal camera which X Infrared sent my way. First of all, this box is huge. I wonder what's inside because as far as I know, the thermal camera is not much bigger compared to the P2 Pro. And in the cardboard box, we find this large carry case only. The case is divided into two compartments. On one side we find two USB-C cables, stickers, a printed welcome letter and a small basic manual. There is also a strap to carry the case around your shoulder. And on the other side we find the answer to why this case is so big. There is a handle for you to clip your phone and the thermal camera to. The supplied USB-C cable can then be used to connect the camera to your phone. I guess this makes it easier in certain situations. And finally, there is the T2S Plus thermal camera, coming in its own little case. Although the T2S Plus is a little bigger compared to the P2 Pro, it is still very small. And the reason for the bigger size is the built-in adjustable macro lens, which should be very useful when we need to get close to a PCB. Before we can try the thermal camera, we need to download a new application. But that is a good thing, because the new Xtherm app has a lot more features. Similar to the old application, we get many settings to customize the capability of the thermal camera, including changing the temperature unit, temperature resolution, watermarks and many other measurement parameters. I'm not sure yet how those settings influence the temperature measurement, but for today's tests, I left everything at the default values. The application supports a few image manipulation techniques, like brightness and contrast adjustment or flipping the screen horizontally or vertically. What is really interesting though are the new features and capabilities of the thermal sensor. The controls for those features appear when you press on the thermometer symbol. You can now draw regions on your thermal image for which a summary of temperatures appear on the screen. Maximum, minimum as well as average temperatures are displayed for each region. But rectangles are not the only shape available. Another type are temperature sensitive lines. The temperature is measured along the line and you get again a summary of temperatures. And finally, dots are available if you are just interested in the temperature of one single spot. And the best part is that you can draw up to 3 thermal regions per type. All temperatures are measured in real time. All 9 regions. If I didn't miscount, this camera is capable of measuring 18 temperatures at the same time. How useful this is seems a bit questionable since it is hard to read the information on screen. And I did inform them that the measurements for points overlap with the data of the rectangles. Hopefully they will be able to fix this issue in the next release of the application. Since we can measure many different spots on the card, let me set up rectangles around the two voltage regulators and lines across the L-shaped memory layout. Like in the previous videos, I will use Unreal Tournament to stress the card and see what temperatures we will get. 
And if you're interested in this thermal camera, check the video description. There is an affiliate link as well as a discount code for you. After playing for a while, the memory reaches a temperature of 45 degrees. The voltage regulator responsible for delivering the core voltage settles at a temperature of 43 degrees. And finally, the voltage regulator responsible for creating 3.3 volts in region R1 reaches a temperature of around 56 degrees. Since we have the adjustable macro lens on this camera, we can easily move a lot closer to the PCB and see a lot more details. I can imagine that this will be very helpful when debugging shorts on small SMD components. The temperatures are very similar to what we have seen before. On the back of the card, I measured the spots where the 3DFX chip and the voltage regulator are located. Both remain at a temperature of around 45 degrees. So, how does the new cooling solution for this Voodoo 3 hold up? The voltage regulator responsible for generating 3.3 volts is about 7 to 8 degrees hotter compared to what I measured in my previous video. But this is explainable because, in the other test, I had a fan blowing over the entire card. Thankfully, we added thermal paste to the heatsink of the voltage regulator, which helped to reduce the temperature by over 20 degrees. On an unmodified card, the voltage regulator reached up to 97 degrees. Since now we remain below 60 degrees, I think this upgrade is a great success. Without a doubt, this Voodoo 3 3333 will outperform many stock Voodoo 3s, and it is faster than any Voodoo 3 model released by 3DFX for the PCI bus. But what do you think about this mod? Do you have a Voodoo 3 that would benefit from active cooling? A thermal camera can shed some light on the temperatures and hotspots of your retro hardware. A reminder to check out the T2S Plus from X Infrared. There is a link in the video description as well as a discount code. Buying the camera through my affiliate link will not cost you anything extra. It will however support this channel. And with this we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the content and let me know if you'd like to mod your Voodoo 3. Of course, the easiest way to reduce the temperature of your passively cooled cards is to have a fan blowing air over them. But wouldn't you prefer the integrated, active cooling solution you have seen in this video? Or would you want to go all out and also fine tune the frequency and adjust the voltage permanently? If you do, then I highly suggest to start watching my series on the Voodoo 3 voltage mods with a video linked in the top right corner. I'm looking forward to read your comments. And that is all I have for you today. A special thanks to all my Patreons and all of you who are still here. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.